time for Wednesday's hour number two on Hashtag Daily K with your host, Peter Bint. Korean dramas, movies and even lyrics. Why is the world paying attention to Korean stories? From classics to modern masterpieces, time to dig deep into the charms of Korean literature. On Check It Out with Paul. Every Wednesday, hump day, jump day, pump day, we introduce various Korean literature pieces to you, talk about their Korean cultural implications, have a good old chit-chat with our wonderful Paul Matthews in the studio. How are we, sir? I'm doing all right, you know, it's a Wednesday, the weather... Isn't it spectacular? Spectacular on my way here. Not a sign of fine dust. I could see all the buildings. Oh, it's amazing. And last night, I'd, I, I was working late last night, uh-huh. and I finished at about 10.40. Okay. And I took a taxi back home, and I had the window oh open. Okay. And the breeze was amazing. The freshness of the yeah, air at the moment, it right? It was warm, but at the same time, the cool breeze coming in. This is the best time of year. I wish this weather could just continue for as long as possible. Although, although, although. And a big although. Oh, no. Three nights in a row, Mosquito. Mosquito killed it. Next day, Mosquito killed it. Last night, 10.30, about to fall asleep. Wife says, don't move. And then right next to my face and she killed another Mosquito. Are you sure it wasn't the same one coming back for revenge? Well, if it resurrected itself, then I'm very scared. Zombie Mosquitoes, (laughs) they're coming. It's 2021. Yeah, I hate Mosquitoes. Do you have a problem with your place? Are you all right with them? I'm fine because they go for my wife. See, that's my wife's attitude as well. They go for hubby, so it's not my problem. But because of our cats, we have to be careful. Oh, really? Because Mosquitoes are bad for cats. As in if they they get bitten? They can carry diseases and so on. Oh, really? So we have to be careful. I haven't seen a mosquito in our house as yet knock on wood but i will be being vigilant okay get your electric tennis racket out to zap them um today's book anything we can segue from hairdressers into this not really (laughs) but but it is a very good book It is a very important book and i I want to talk about a particular day now uh, may we think of family month Mm -hmm. we think of teacher's day and we think of parents day and we think of you know children's day but there's also a very important anniversary on the korean calendar oh is there yeah and i'm not talking about a public holiday i'm not talking about a celebration it's a day that lives in infamy in Mm. korean history it's a day that takes us back to korea's tragic recent past It's the anniversary of the events in Gwangju back in 1980. May 18th is the day. And that is next Tuesday. And what happened then was a terrifying incident that left, well, we're talking hundreds, if not thousands, dead and injured. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people looking at the situation in Myanmar from Korea saying, you know, we're with you. In our recent past, we have similar events that unfolded due to a a coup and a dictatorial uh, government and whatnot. And yeah, it's crazy to think as early as the 80s, you know, as recently as the 80s, I should say. Yeah, so I wanted to commemorate that day because I think it's important to look back at history and take time to remember what happened. And this story, it's called The Flag. Gipbal mm-hmm. by Hong Hidam, translated by Jun Sung Hee. And it, it looks at what happened from the eyes of Kwangju citizens. Okay. And it's a bit of a confronting read at times, but it's the sort of thing I think we need to take time to experience. We have to learn from history to make sure we don't repeat it. Of course, yeah. And that's why a lot of Koreans standing with Myanmar and saying, you can get through this. Look how things have changed in our country in that short space of time as well. There's a lot of pop culture out there related to Gwangju in recent years. The film Taxi, Taxi Driver. Should we, can you just wait till part three? Yes, all right. Uh, wait, but... Why do you do this to me? I, I've <laughs> ruined it. Have you not read this? I've done all this. Let's go back to front today. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Oh, my goodness. Uh, so we're going to get to three readings from this book that has been translated into English, right? Um, and, yeah, if you don't know anything about this event, we've got May 18th being written down by Korean Teacher TV, yeah, and the Korean title, Kipbao Flag. It's a literal translation. Uh, we'll look first quickly at the author and translation before getting to that. Uh, yes, Hong Yi-dam, the first time featuring her, she was born in Seoul back in 
1945. She studied Korean language and literature at Ihua Women's University. And then in 1978, she moved with her husband to Gwangju. Uh-huh. And so she was witness to the Gwangju <sighs> uprising. Um, and that spurred her to write about it. And the flag was published in 1988, so relatively recently after what happened. Oh, I see. Um, and her work has been continually writing about what happened in Gwangju, about those events, uh, not just focusing on the incident, but also on the survivors and the question of how do you heal the wounds of this past tragedy. Mm. Um, but she's also done other things. More recently, 2011, she published a children's book all about hope. And I think it's a really important thing that we f i n i s h that we feature her on this show. Yeah, having that perspective of having lived there during the uprising. This isn't like a non-fiction work, right? It's not the actual account. No, it's a fictionalised version of the truth, I feel. But in the same way, when you read it, it feels like you're actually on the ground. It it seems to have some similarities with that book we did about Jeju and the uh, massacre down there from a few weeks ago. Uh, Exactly. So this can be a tough read sometimes, but an important one if you love Korea and you're interested in Korean culture. Now, the translator's name, I feel every other week it might be Jung s u n g h e Well, two weeks ago, we did feature her <laughs> okay. uh, with Kong's Garden. Uh, we've done a number of her translators, uh, translations before. She's fantastic. She translates from English to Korean, also Korean to English. She's absolutely brilliant. Uh, she's, uh, 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 she's got PhDs from both Harvard and SNU. She's a lecturer at Boston College. We love her. We love her. We love her. Jun s u n g h e e is one of our regulars. She's great. We're still waiting on that recent translation of the autobiography of President Kim Dae-jung. We're going to do that before you leave the show in many years' time, Paul. Well, am I, I leaving promise. the show? No, absolutely Are not. you making me leave the show? No. Did, did anybody know about this? <laughs> did, did anybody get an email? We're going to hear the first reading. So how does this, how does it, is this from the beginning of the book? Uh, this is from near the start, and it's where one of the main characters, s u m b u n uh, we hear about her experiences on May 18th. The 18th was a bloody Sunday. That day, there was a service at the night school s u n b u n attended. Afterward, she had lunch with her friends at a Chinese restaurant. She got on the bus after hanging out with them. The bus stopped near the public terminal, but couldn't go any further, because the street was full of demonstrators. s u n b u n got off, following the passengers. The area was full of pungent smoke because of the tear gas canisters the combat policemen had been firing. Crowds kept pouring out of Gumnamno Street and the fire station. s u m b u n couldn't move, stuck in the middle of the crowd. Suddenly she heard shrieks here and there. She could barely open her eyes because they were stinging so much. Soldiers in combat fatigues appeared out of the blue on a wild rampage. Uh, we had uh, Sophie, also ruined in part three. Taxi Driver is an awesome movie. But we'll get to that. We will get to that. After get next, to that. <laughs> next song break, Goodness I Peter, promise. Goodness, Peter. Why do you... I, I spend hours, you hours do. on these scripts, Blood, getting everything ready for you. And you wanted to have a cliffhanger surprise. I'm sorry. So yeah, but you've, just, you've let Song Kang-ho out of the bag. Let Miss, Miss Sabah have your, your what for. Uh, you also said, uh, Sophie, why everything has to be resolved in war, I really don't oh. understand. Yeah, look, I, I know exactly what you mean, Sophie. And we see around the world, we see what's happening, not just, not just in Myanmar, but in other places as well. And it breaks my heart because at the end of the day, mm. it's not the governments who suffer, it's the ordinary people on either side. Absolutely. And yeah, eh, Raoul also s a y it seems the climax is war and facing up to weapons. Yeah, it seems when the discourse kind of gets a bit frustrating, there are some who will too quickly reach for those weapons of force, right? I I think in certain situations, maybe it is warranted to stop some terrible outcome, but in many like this against the people, it's totally uncalled for. So many things can be solved without violence, Mm. and to resort to violence, it has to be the the very last 
resort. Absolutely. Uh, Leon says, I remember Paul recommending some movies to do with the Kwangju uprising when he was on Catch the Wave. What a brilliant show that was. Uh, the new Korean drama Youth of May is about the event too. Yes, Leon, don't worry. I, uh, you may be familiar with some of my recommendations in part three. Oh, I won't nice. spoil it, unlike some hosts. <laughs> he also went on to say, as usual, the producer doing a great job with sound effects and Paul's awesome reading make it such a wholesome experience listening to the story. And you also recommend watching Speeds, That's My Fault, and it's over the music videos, the drama version videos, drama versions of the music videos. Also, look at these events. Oh, that's interesting in the music as well. Um, and one last message from Cherie saying, very dramatic read, Paul. Definitely makes me want to know more about the story, about this piece of history, right? So Sunbun gets completely caught up in this yeah with the protesters with the riot police out there is she okay well i don't know whether okay is the right term but she does survive she makes it out alive and uh -huh. in fact she is the survivor of the story one of two women the story focuses on um she lives in Gwangju. Mm -hmm. she lives an ordinary life but we meet her in the middle of the uprising um, and she wakes up, and instead of going to work like her mother insists, yeah. she wants to head to the governor's office complex where oh. all the citizens are gathering. Okay. Uh, she's given a lift by a stranger on a bicycle. There's no cars on the roads because of what's happened. Mm -hmm. And she would never normally accept a ride like this, but yeah. I guess the community spirit is high, everyone is pushing together. I see. And then we flash back to that very first excerpt I read out mm -hmm. of what she witnessed on May 18th. And she did make it out alive, but she saw the horrors that happened on that day. She can't even remember how she got herself home. Just in a daze. Yeah. And so she goes to this complex. There are banners everywhere. She heads inside. She pays her respect to the, the mountains of the dead. <gasps> Bodies piled up. Uh -huh. And then she bumps into her friends from work, uh, including one woman, the second sort of main character of our story, Hyungja. And they all, they all got through May 18th and mm -hmm. they recount their own stories, how terrible it was. And then Hyungja starts talking about uh, what they call a teacher. You know, we, in Korean we say, Sun Nim doesn't mean necessarily sure. your teacher, mm -hmm. but a wise and respected man. Yeah. This teacher, Yoon, one of the intellectual leaders of the protests, he told Hyungja it was a losing battle and that he was going to escape from Gwangju. Oh, goodness. He was going to leave them there. Uh-huh. And at first they don't believe her because why would one of their leaders just mm. up and go? But she explains in detail how she met him uh, the day before and how he tried to persuade her to escape with him. Well, that's where we'll pick up the second reading. Yoon turned around. They could all hear the sound of rapid firing again. Yoon's eyes wavered for a second. Stepping forward, he said, This is a losing battle. Join us. No. Firmly holding the balustrade of the stairs, she stared fiercely at them as they disappeared. She felt betrayed. She ran towards the governor's office. Hundreds of demonstrators armed with various firearms had advanced close to the building and were exchanging shots. She saw a boy who briefly attended night school. He was a shoeshine boy. He was fighting with a carbine in his hand. He remembered her and smiled. Then he raised his carbine high. Kyungja could instinctively recognize the people with guns. They were mostly lower class people like her. She shared the joy of liberation with them later that evening. Individuals, neighborhoods, streets, and Gumnanro Street all opened up to create a democratic community together with the opening of the governor's office building complex, the site of their last decisive battle. So it kind of seems like when the, the going got tough, a lot of the intellectuals, maybe the thought leaders of this, leave, and it's just the regular folk left behind. Yeah, the have-nots, as oh, they're described in dear. this story. Yeah, they're left to do the fighting. The intellectuals who haven't been arrested, well, they're, they're escaping. They're heading off because they know 
that they can't win. Mm, They're they like, the you know, we, we, we'll fight another day. This is not going to happen. We can't stand up to the military government. The pick. only ones who believe that are the ordinary citizens. Uh huh. So picking their battles to a certain extent, where as the ordinary citizens maybe can't do that. Yeah, leaving these ordinary citizens in the lurch who still have hope, even though this is a hopeless situation. Oh, goodness. And so we have these two women. We have Hyungja and we have Sungbun, and they are committed. Uh, they stay at the governor's office complex. Mm -hmm. They're helping prepare food for the fighters. They want to do whatever they can. They're even prepared to fight. And they hear rumors that an American naval ship has docked at Busan. Oh. And for a moment, they hope, oh, maybe the U.S. will intervene. They're mm -hmm. on our side. You know, they're the good guys. Sure. But then they have a conversation with an old man who persuades them otherwise. He tells them what the U.S. troops did during the Korean War. He was a witness fighting for the South when they headed up to Pyongyang. Uh -huh. He saw the destruction. This once beautiful city he had visited as a child was now completely and utterly decimated. Uh, he saw the darker side of the U.S. forces actions then. Yeah, and he says the only people they can trust are their own people. Uh -huh. And things are getting desperate. The military are moving in for their final assault. Everyone knows this is It. This is the last stand. Mm. The younger men, teenage boys, sure. and the women are encouraged to go and say, if you stay here, it's certain death. <gasps> so many leave. In fact, Hyungja persuades Sunbun to go. Mm -hmm. uh, but Hyungja stays. Oh. She gets herself a gun, an old ratty gun that doesn't really work, but it doesn't matter because they don't have any ammo anyway. <sighs> and she's determined to make a stand. And then. Well, the fighters have their final meal. They smoke their final cigarette and the military close in. They, they know their fate almost. Yeah, and we're witness to the start of the battle, but then it cuts to later. And the final part of the book con concerns Sun Bun and her surviving friends. They're trying to work out how many people were actually captured, how mm -hmm. many people were arrested, how many people were injured. The figures are fuzzy, mm -hmm. so they're making their own tally, and they can't handle the number of dead. They, sure. they, Simba's like, we'll leave that to the future. Someone mm -hmm. else can deal with that. But they work out that 70% of those imprisoned or injured are what they call the have-nots. Uh -huh. The working classes, the lower classes, they are the ones who bore the brunt of this massacre. Despite not being like the, the puppeteers of this or yeah. orchestrating it. And then Yoon. The teacher, the leader, sneaks back to Kwangju. Mm -hmm. He visits them in secret. Uh, he's been hiding out in Seoul. Um, they drink and they talk together. Simbun even confronts him about caring more about his own people than the have-nots. Mm. And then she tells him that Young Jar is dead. Oh, and he's goodness. deeply, deeply shocked. He goes to sleep. They leave money and food for him. And Simbun, she secretly leaves extra money. For Almost him. like she feels guilty for him. <sighs> And they walk away, leaving him to sleep through the day. And as they walk, they see men riding bicycles. Mm -hmm. And an ordinary guy she doesn't know offers her a lift. And she refuses, and she watches him ride away. And as he rides away, his clothes flutter in the wind like flags. There's some deep imagery here, something meaningful about refusing the ride now as well, of the cyclist passing by. Yeah, that time has changed. Goodness gracious. And all based on an actual historical event, despite being a fictional story, we'll look at some cultural aspects in the book. We'll get to our third reading as well. I'm in London. I'm in Australia. Tokyo. The Philippines. Finland. Indonesia. New York. Arirang Radio. Radio. Now live in Seoul. The governor's office building complex is the place for those willing to risk their lives. A place for those who consider risking their lives not as a matter of choice, but as what one ought to do. As if trying to convince herself, Yangja clasped her hands together. Sungbun held them in hers. Listen to me carefully. Somebody will have to do this later. Perhaps it is you who will do it, said Hyungja. Sunbun clutched her hands tightly. Hyungja continued, Do remember those who stayed in the governor's office building complex to the last. 
you must remember those who took part in this struggle and died. Then you'll know who makes history. That knowledge will make you stronger. Those were maybe Hyungja's last words before sending Sunbun away. Yeah. And maybe Sunbun's job was to retell the tale. And, and as we said, this is fictional, but maybe this kind of book is a representation of that, a record of what happened. Absolutely. You've hit, you've hit the nail on the head. It feels like Hong is basically carrying out her duties to her fallen fellow citizens. Yes, yeah. it's fiction, but this happened. No, Sunbun and Hyungja may not be real. Humans, but there were many women like them, many men like them. Um, this is such a powerful political, social, and human story, and it's so important that we remember what happened. Absolutely. It's it's thirty, th well, forty one. My goodness, forty one years ago, <gasps> this happened. But yeah. still, there are survivors who are living with this pain, living with these memories. Generations of families affected by what happened. Yeah, and a, and a lot of fuzziness in the numbers still to this day, I think, right, in terms of the records. So those who come out with these stories who were living down there at the time, really, really important. Uh, some messages coming in from you guys. Tropic Girl saying, it's so unjust. How can the common man who's uh, simply defending themselves be the ones imprisoned, the ones killed? They are the real heroes here. And yeah, I guess that is often the case, isn't it? It's the ones that come up with the ideals and the theories, get everyone passionate, who maybe aren't always fighting on the front lines. Right? Well, we say history is written by the winners. And we're lucky enough that Korea became a fully fledged democracy starting mm. in the late 80s. And over the past 30 years, these incidents have been investigated and uncovered and commemorated and people... People know what happened. If things had turned out differently, we might not know the truth, but we're lucky that we live in the society we are in now. Absolutely. Stacey Wiley also saying, I'm getting emotional. I have tears in my eyes oh, just goodness. listening to this story. Uh, can totally understand that as well. Yeah, we've got Sophie talking about May 13th. Uh, that is Hari Raya, which is tomorrow. In 1969, it was also a bad historical time here in Malaysia. At least that's what my mum told me. Mm. Why can't humans be more civilised? I can't bear to think of the pain of that unworthy war. To think they're all from the same country, some related, a total massacre. I can picture how agonizing that time was people who never thought they had to defend themselves totally unbelievable i hate war look sophie i agree with you 100 percent um uh, this is something i have to study about i've not heard about may 13th but i think when the show finishes today i'm going to do a little bit of research because it's important we all learn about what happened it may not be from where we are or where we live mm. but we need to remember these struggles remember these people yeah distance doesn't make it right to turn a blind eye to it uh just fyi listeners before we get into our cultural talk the implications of this story every wednesday now we're going to be giving giving away those Talk To Me in Korean three-month memberships because Wednesday is also very much language-related, beautiful translations of Korean works. Uh, so you can win today. Send us a message. Tell us you want the prize as well. You can I get want it. the prize! Apart from Paul what? and me in the studio. <laughs> you learn to speak Korean on your own at home with this systematic online course. Um, so looking at this, I did ruin it in the opening. There are not just books about this movies as well. Uh, yeah, I thought I'd recommend um, three movies in particular that I think are, are really brilliant and mm -hmm. worth watching. If you don't have the time to read a book, I think everyone's got the time to dedicate a couple of hours to a movie. Sure. Uh, the first one uh, is Hwarohan Hyuga. Uh, May 18th is the English name. Uh, it was released back in 2007. Stars Kim sang yoon and sang Gi, and the now very famous Lee jung -gi. Uh, focusing on two brothers whose lives are turned upside down by the uprising. What uh, an interesting title in Korean. Yeah, like sugar. A, a wonderful vacation, okay. beautiful holiday. Mm. Um, but no, it's not. Um, the thing is, the younger brother wants to take part in the protests mm -hmm. and the older brother wants to protect him. And I think you can probably guess 
how that's going to go. No, oh, it's, it's a tearjerker. It's brilliant. It gives you a broad view of what happened while also keeping a tight focus on on those two characters. Yeah, and I guess you've got to remember in all situations, you know, and I think when the numbers get bigger and bigger in terms of casualties, yeah, you forget about the individual family stories, which is what films can really shine a light on, right? And that is a realistic take on things, isn't it? Like maybe the older family members more realistic. Like the intellectual in our story, exactly. You're not yes. going to win this. Don't lose your life over it. But if you're really passionate about a cause, especially when you're younger, you do get that fire in your belly, and you're like, it doesn't matter if I don't make a difference to the outcome. I've got to show how I feel. Sometimes you have to stand up for what you believe in. Absolutely. Um, and then the movie that you spoiled before, <laughs> uh, Taxi Unjonsa, a taxi driver from 2017, another brilliant film starring Song Kang Ho as the titular taxi driver and. the German actor Thomas Kretschmann as a real-life journalist who came to Kwangji to investigate. It's actually based on the experiences of Jürgen Hinspeter, mm-hmm. who came to Kwangju during the uprising. Um, and what's really interesting, it, it captures not just the atmosphere, mm. but it also captures the conflicting feelings of the different citizens. Uh. Because the whole city was caught up in this. Whether you agreed with it or not, the sure. whole city was under siege. And I think it does, it does a really good job at... I don't know, portraying that sort of uncertainty mm-hmm. of what it was like to be in the city at the time. Yeah, I watched the trailer for this. I was going to watch it a couple of weekends back, but my wife was like, it's not in a mood for one of these films, you know, which is going to get you deep into thought, you know, not probably feeling the best about yourself. And it was really interesting how, you know, he's driving down from Seoul, this taxi driver taking him down to Gwangju. They reach checkpoint, and uh, I think... Uh, Song Gago's character is from that area and he's like saying, oh, what what battalion are you? you know, yeah. And then getting really friendly with one of the juniors and then one of the senior soldiers comes in and abruptly is like, you better turn around. You know, this isn't for you. What's going on in here? It was very much kind of isolated, contained within that area at the time. Yeah, it's, it's, it's shocking how it happened and, and what effect it had. And this brings me to my third mm-hmm. film, which at first you may go, what has this got to do with <laughs> Kwangju? But trust me, okay. Okay. It's called Peppermint Candy, Bakasatang. Mm-hmm. It came out in 1999. It's directed by Yi Chang Dong, who's known for burning and poetry and other brilliant films. Mm-hmm. And it's about the life of a man. He's played by Sol Gyeong Gu. And at the start of the film, he takes his own life. He jumps in front of a train. Oh, goodness. And then we go back in time and we hop, skip, and jump to. periods in his life he's got an unhappy marriage he's a police officer who's corrupt and as we journey back we start to understand why he is like this mm-hmm. what is the reason why he is such a broken man and it's linked to kwangju yeah because he was not a kwangju citizen but he was doing his military service back in 1980 oh. he was one of the soldiers on the ground besieging Kwangju, Mm -hmm. and that has a lasting impact on his whole life. This was one of the first films I saw when I came to Korea, and it was not just brilliant, but it helped me understand a part of Korean history that was so unfamiliar to me. I highly, highly recommend it. I think all three films are brilliant, but Peppermint Candy in particular is one that stuck with me and I think is well worth a watch. Is it focusing in on the actual events of the uprising then as well, in the flashbacks and whatnot? Uh, yeah, there is, there is one particular event. Um, I, won't, I won't spoil it for you. I spoil mm-hmm. the books, but I won't spoil the films. <laughs> uh, that is uh, in that film. Yeah, Taxi Driver, have you managed to watch that, Paul? Oh, of course. I've, I've watched all of them. I'm oh. a big Korean movie fan. In fact, I watch Korean movies. I read Korean books. I love Korean everything basically i i don't think to be honest i've ever watched a, a movie that focuses on it not one of these three i'm thought sure there are more of them as well out yeah. and about um and this book that you've read today really getting to know the situation the struggle more and more as well uh, yeah uh, and i would recommend if you have a chance to come to korea in the future we can't say when that may be mm-hmm. please go to kwangju um kwangju is not just this moment in history. Mm -hmm. Gwangju is a vibrant, brilliant city with wonderful people, with great food. They have a Uh tokkaibigil, a Um, (laughs) tokkaibigori, which is the the Korean hamburger street. Mm -hmm. And by Korean hamburger, I don't mean you've got a bun and lettuce. No. You've got this grilled patty served with uh, fermented bean paste and all sorts of fixings. And it's absolutely delicious. Gwangju is one of my favorite cities in Korea. It is said to be a tasty place. Uh, Thank you, as always, Paul, for coming in with this 
most meaningful tale. Uh, thanks as always to the Asia Publishers uh, for their help with copyright permission for this broadcast. Thank you to Hong Hee Dam for her powerful story, to Jun Sung Hee for her great translation. I will be back again with another book next week, I promise. Paul, we'll see you next Wednesday. Goodbye. You can listen to Check It Out with Paul Matthews on Adidang Radio's Hashtag Daily K every Wednesday from 10am KST.